One of the best dates I ever had, I was living in D.C. We, um, I had never taken a train ride before, so we took the train from D.C. to New York. He took me to um, Nobu 57. So we went to Nobu, and then the next day he took me to see the color purple. I was like, this is the most thoughtful Valentine's Day I've ever had, and probably still one of the most thoughtful weekends. Somebody's like really planned out for me. And then we got back home. He bought me my first Louis Vuitton bag, and I was like, okay, yeah, this is great. <clears throat> and then I found out that he was a scammer. <laughs> uh, I think she goes on to say he's Nigerian too. Uh, shout out to my Niger brothers. Do you know what you have done? Business. You gave my sweat to foreign miners. That is what you have done. This is for the ladies. Part of the reason why it seems like so many men are shitty these days, right? There's a an abundance of future archetype men, an abundance of fuckboys, is because, as you can see in this story, those men tend to be the most memorable. When you ask women about their best experiences, their worst experiences, it tends to be stories of their experience with shitty men. And unfortunately, the good men, the men who would have been good long-term partners, good fathers, tend to be forgettable. So when young men are watching this play out socially, what it tells them is that it is far better to be memorable than to be good. And unfortunately, I think women don't consider love bombing. <laughs> I think women don't consider sustainability because the reality of it is any man who is going to be so enthusiastic about throwing the kitchen sink at you without even fully or even appropriately getting to know you, either number one has a whole bunch of money to blow that might have been ill gotten money because that money is a lot easier to blow or this man is trying to buy you. But if they not all hoes, then why I got to pay to take them out to eat then? I mean, I'm paying. That's payment. I don't know. I guess because you're a man, you know, you have to lead and take initiative. But I'm paying, which makes her a hoe. Why don't I just give her the money I was going to spend on dinner and that hoe can go grocery shopping? Eh. But again, since a lot of our women grow up watching reality television, movies, and romance novels, the idea is the man who is willing to do the most for me, the man who is willing to give me the most extravagant, most memorable date, is the man who loves me the most. The man who's able to excite me the most is the man who loves me the most. And the reality is not that. Because as a Nigerian, I know brothers. <laughs> How much you need me to spend? Oh, you got a 90 day rule? Okay, I'll wait 90 days. And day 91, I'm out. So again, ladies, if you're not focusing on substance, if you're not focusing on sustainability, but instead you're focusing on games, you're, instead you're trying to find the highest bidder for your time, attention, or your punani, you'll continue to be used as an object. Because again, there are some men who take pride in conquering for the sake of conquering. However long you need him to wait, however much you need him to spend. A matter of fact, he'll hire a professional date planner to, to give you the most extravagant experience you've ever had in your life. And because you're so blown away by the, the, the pageantry of the experience and you didn't focus on y'all's conversation, you didn't focus on the synergy, you didn't focus on shared values, you didn't focus on asking yourself the question, is this somebody I would want to be stuck in the house with during a thunderstorm where there's nothing else to do and we're bored because that's that's what life is like you can fall in love with anybody who takes you to dubai you can fall in love with anybody who takes you to nobu or buys you a bunch of expensive shit. that's easy but real life is mundane and again because we're not prioritizing sustainability my fellow nigerian brothers will continue to win because since women are treating their love affection and their attention as a commodity We'll pay and then we'll treat you like somebody we paid for, especially when that post nut clarity sets in and those rose colored glasses lift and that makeup comes off. And when I already smashed and I know that uh, eh, this is this all this, this is all this was. What good Samaritan brought me home? Well, hey, Silver Fox, ready for another porch pound? Oh, f me. Your ball, my common. And the other thing I'll say too is like, we talk a lot about how men have 
men are immature, men won't grow up, you know, men in their 40s act like children. But the reality, a lot of women have Peter Pan syndrome as well. A lot of women still think they're princesses, right? Shout out to Maggie, the substitute teacher. She said that whereas men tend to see themselves in young men, women tend to see themselves as young women. So basically there is still that little girl in most women. And in a, in a way, it's a beautiful thing, right? That youthful exuberance and things like that, that youthful energy. But in other ways, it's ridiculous and it's immature. You have 50 year old women who are still waiting for their Prince Charming. <laughs> <laughs> to ride in and with, with his white horse or white Mercedes real estate in Aspen. And he's got a beach house and a lake house and a ski resort. And he has no kids and he's successful and he's mentally stable and he's the best sex you've ever had. And it's like a lot of that stuff is super mm. immature, but we don't think about it that way because we live in the culture that you could have it all. You don't have to quote unquote settle. And not only can you have it all, you are deserving of it all because you're God's gift to everything. Now, when you start saying it out, it does sound narcissistic. At best, it's solipsistic, right? It's that first player energy. Mine, mine is coming because I'm owed it, regardless of who I am outside of myself, how I'm perceived by others. And it's not until you grow up and you mature that you realize that you aren't old shit. Hey, if you've made it all the way to the end, please click that like and subscribe button. Also share this with somebody that you think would gain value from it. Also shout out to our Patreon executive producers and VIP members. Make sure you head over to Patreon and check out some exclusive content. A lot more happens on Patreon that can happen on YouTube. So please uh, consider becoming a member there. Click the thumbnail at the top if you want the full video. Click the thumbnail at the bottom if you want a video that's closely related to this. Again, like, share, subscribe. Appreciate you guys for watching. Check out some more of our content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.